Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're going to review three different sets of night vision goggles. I went a little crazy and uh, blew my retirement fund. No, just kidding. Saved up a while for these things. Um, but I'm going to review three different night vision sets of uh, optics that I have to kind of give you an idea of the differences that are out there and the options when it comes to what would fit in your budget, what might not fit in your budget. So as you guys probably know, night vision allows you to see through the night um, in total darkness. There's got to be some source of light that allows the, uh, the light particles to bounce around and the image intensifier tube inside of here takes that light and intensifies it and makes it uh, into a sight that you can see. Um, on top of that too, you probably see it inside a video game where you put on night vision, everything turns green. That's basically what these things do. They amplify all the available light, turn it into a usable optic or a usable image, and you can see pretty much in pitch dark, which is totally freaking awesome. Okay, so when it comes to buying night vision, there are three different kinds of uh, styles of headsets or um, optics you could buy. A monocular, monocular basically means you could use it with one eye, okay? There's a monocular style version. These two are monoculars. There's also a binocular which uses two intensifier tubes like this Anvis type of setup. And they also have an, a binocular which goes through just one intensifier tube uh, which is like the PVS-7 type of um, night vision goggles. So I'm going to kind of go through the pros and cons of each and every one. The most affordable way for somebody to get in a night vision um, is, is to look at what's out there. There's three different, basically three different generations. Generation 1, Generation 2, and Generation 3. There supposedly is some Generation 4 out there, but it's not really something that us as commercial users or end users can really have access to. And it just really refers to a special type of thin film, pinnacle, auto gating, blah, 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 fancy schmancy stuff. Um, generation 1 stuff, uh, just by definition, is really old stuff. The old technology from Russia or back from Vietnam, it is practically unusable. I've seen through it. You could buy it. Um, it came, I think, a Call of Duty game. You could buy a, a Generation 1 type of headset. And you can kind of use it, but it sucks. So the first level I would recommend is a Generation 2 or 2 Plus goggle. Uh, these are made by Night Optics. It's the D300 model. These are actually what they call Generation 2 Pluses. Awesome commercial grade um, tube and also a very beefy aluminum housing. Okay, These have a, a bit of a weight to it. These weigh 17 ounces as compared to another goggles, the, another set of optics I'm going to show you guys. But works great for an end user. You can find them used on eBay, typically between $900 to $1,100 bucks, and brand new for about $1,700. Okay, So that's the Generation 2 Plus. Comes with a IR beam in the front here. And uh, this particular one runs off a CR123 battery and it has a little wedge here so that way it can mount into the Rhino mount and the J-arm with its little wedge to index it in. This year I just recently picked up, I found a, uh, an extra Anvis tube from a guy. He sold it to me relatively cheap that was clean and in great condition. And this is actually made by a company um, down, I forget exactly where, but I put some information in my text bar below. This is an awesome, awesome uh, unit here. It's made of machine Delrin. The guy uh, built it with uh, Anvis Optics on the front end and Anvis Optics on the back end. And it's running an MX10160 tube, a generation three tube. It has a space for two AA batteries. And this is the, the control knob here. Because it's an Anvis type of um, setting, there is no adjustable gain. And it also has a built-in little IR LED that's here. Really great setup. I really like this. Turnaround time is fantastic. The build quality looks great. And it was really affordable. This is a great option for those of you who are on a budget and want to build your night vision setup piece by piece. Um, the complete housing with the optics, I believe, is 675 bucks, which is really affordable when you think about it. And the tube, you're going to have to source used on eBay. Find somebody with a decent tube. I guess, uh, again, also an Anvis tube. I found my Anvis tube for 800 bucks online. So this is a complete generation three setup for about $1,200, $1,300, which is, uh, no, actually 800 bucks, 600 bucks, about $1,500 all said and done. And it was assembled and purged too by Adam. And he did a fantastic job. The weight on this sucker is only 11.1 .1 ounces. 
which is about 50% less than this Generation 2. And the reason that weight is an important factor is if you're going to be running all night or all day with night visions, uh, a night vision set on your helmet, it's going to eventually make your neck a little sore if you don't use it all the time. And so the lighter it is, the better it is, and plus it wants to be a little bit more stable. Okay, and I'll do a little bit more detailed review in a second. And finally, this is a set I picked up. Um, these are a set of uh, Anvis 9 goggles. These are actually Litton uh, M49, M949s. These are also like the uh, F4949 sets. These are Aviator goggles. And you can tell by the, the interesting green coating in the front, which is a little bit different from the, the land type of Anvis goggle housing here. Um, these are freaking awesome. I, I totally lucked out and I purchased a set on eBay for um, about 2000 bucks. Um, if you were to buy these brand new retail, you're probably looking at spending close to seven to $10,000, which is insane. Um, but for a, a guy like myself, at the price I paid for, I think I got a really fair deal. And if I don't like them, I can use them for a little bit, resell it, and make my money back. So that's the reason I got it. Now, when it comes to the different options when it comes to night vision, you have the monocular, you have the binocular that goes through one tube, and you also have the uh, binocular two intensifiers. And let's start from the beginning. With a monocular, what's great about this is you could run the monocular on your non-strong side, which for many folks, if you're a right-hander, this will be your left-hand side, okay? So at nighttime, what would happen is your eye on your left-hand side is going to be seeing this bright green image, so it's not going to be adjusted to the dark. However, your right-hand eye, if that is your strong side, your right-hand eye will be adjusted to the dark, and so if you had to flip this up or something happened to your night vision, you still have operational capability in one eye, while this other eye is probably recovering. It takes a couple, you know, a couple minutes for your eye to redilate to the proper um, dilation for the light or whatever. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the benefit of using a monocular. The only problem though is the depth of field isn't that great. Um, it's kind of like looking through a toilet paper roll, and on top of that too, um, because of this, these eye pieces here, it has a tendency to fog up, and that's why a lot of folks run the Wilcox Amber filter, which is the amber cap that goes in this thing, okay? Same issue with uh, Generation 2 um, monocular. Now, they, I don't have one myself. I'm going to be picking one up to just try out, but a PVS-7 is a binocular that runs through one intensifier tube. So it's like an image that you look with two eyes, but it goes through one tube. And the benefits of that is you have both eyes looking at it, so it's easier, it's not as disorienting. But the problem is because both your eyes are covered up, if you imagine both eyes are covered up, right, or all bright, totally uh, dilated for the situation or contracted for a situation, and you had to flip the, your goggles up for whatever reason, now, both eyes are not adjusted to the night and you're effectively blind for a couple minutes your eyes redilate. On top of that too, your depth perception sucks like staring through a toilet paper roll just like a monocular. Okay, So that's a PVS-7. And finally with these Anvis, because you're looking through two different two intensifier tubes, the view is incredible. Your field of vision is increased by about 30 to 40 percent in, in, in my opinion compared to running a monocular. Um, it's going to be, I can't really show it on camera because obviously I don't have two cameras I could shoot through it. But it's going to increase your depth of view, your view. Also, it almost has like a 3D effect as well, which, which is fantastic. And also, it's not disorienting at all. The only problem though is true when you flip it up, you, your eyes are incapable for a couple of minutes uh, while your eyes are still adjusting to the dark. So these are the, the, the different options when it comes to, to night vision. You could start all the way from uh, a Generation 2 system. That's the bare basic that I would recommend starting with, a Generation 2 system. You could find them used, but again, you need to know what you're getting into and you need to know the lifespan of the tube. Generation 2 does have a shorter lifespan than Generation 3. But you can get a Generation 2 anywhere between 1000 to about $2,000. So save your pennies for that, but it's totally well worth it. Works fantastic for the average end user that just might use uh, a set of night vision casually. Now, if you're a type of person who's uh, a little OCD like myself, or, or likes to try something that, or likes to know that they have the best stuff out there, Generation 3 is where it's at. But if you look on eBay, you try to find a new set of PVS 14s or something like that, you're looking at three to four grand, which is out of this world, out of my budget. 
and probably out of many of your guys' budgets. But you have the ability to basically roll your own or create or build your own uh, Generation 3 either by sourcing PVS-14 parts online. You can even find tubes online as well. Um, obviously used will be much cheaper than new, but you really don't know what you're looking at. On top of that too, they, they have kits like this uh, NVM-2AA kit from uh, Adam Barker from AB Night Vision, I believe it is. Again, I'll put the information on the link below. Great guy, fast service, fantastic build quality itself. Um, and again, I paid 800 bucks for the tube. I paid 675 for the, uh, for the housing. And then I paid 50 bucks for them to assemble it. Under 1600 bucks, awesome, awesome Generation 3 night vision. If you're, uh, you know, sharp enough to try to do it on your own, you can also build it yourself as well. Now, if you wanted to buy it like, or build up a, a true Generation 3 type of system, like, uh, or military style system, like the PVS-14, you could buy, I've been searching through eBay, if you're real sharp with your bidding and stuff like that, you could probably build a whole kit for the, for the uh, housing and all the optics without the intensifier tube for about six to seven hundred dollars. And then you're gonna have to find yourself an intensifier tube, which will probably run you anywhere between 500 to 1,000 bucks for used and sky's the limit for a brand new one depending on the quality of the tube itself, okay? So those are some of your options when it comes to night vision. Um, when it comes to mounting systems, the ones that I'm running presently because, again, I've blown all my money in the actual optics. I haven't had the uh, capital now to, to build out a nice mount system. It is that the traditional Rhino mount and J-Arm from the Rodos. All right, this is great for monocular type of setup where index is in right into the uh, system. It's like so, and then mounts right in like that. And then you have yourself a monocular setup here. And then when it comes to the Anvis, the only problem with the Anvis type of housings, type of, like this, or PVS 15s, is they, the, the mounts aren't definitely as common as a monocular type setup, like the Rhinos. These are not commonly used as issue items mostly used for special forces on land and for uh, pilots and air crew. So definitely there's a lot more foot, uh, feet on the ground than there are folks in the air. So the mounts are very difficult for me to find price-wise compared to um, a Rhino mount. So Rhino mounts you can typically pick up for 50 bucks with a J-arm all day long. I ended up picking up this awesome ITT self-powered battery unit which runs off of half size AAs. All right, these little three volt batteries here. Really cool setup. Um, Anvis type setups and PVS 15s typically run a wire that goes into the back with a back battery pack type mounting system. Uh, for me, I like simplicity. The less stuff on there, the better. And um, this actually came off a Gentex flight helmet and all I did instead of cutting in and, and building a special bracket and then mounting it to a, um, you know, an ops core type of mounting system is I just took the visor and I just drilled it and mounted it right on my helmet. Very stable. I mean, this is practically how they're going to mount it on a, a flight helmet anyway. So that's how I am running my system. Just like that. Okay. So those are your different options when it comes to night vision. Again, you have a monoculars, uh, monocular, which is one eye, one tube. You have your binocular system, which is two eyes, your one intensifier tube. And then you have your binocular system with two eyes through two intensifier tubes. So those are your options. Hopefully this is helpful. And then uh, when I get a chance, I'll put up a comparison between generation two and then generation three. So you can get a better feel of the differences of, of optical quality and the illuminating qualities that night visions have. Folks, have a great day. I'll see you out in the field.